Hello students, in this video we are going to learn about SRAM leakage current. In previous video we saw about the design strategy of SRAM. We learnt what is the stability criteria of read operation as well as the write operation. So before we move on into the circuits of SRAM, we are going to learn about the leakage current that is happening in your SRAM. So now, uh, why are we moving into this topic in between of this unit is, we know our semiconductor industry, that is electronic industry is advancing in a very fast phase. So it is very fast. So what we are doing, Previously, we had a big, big devices. Now, all the devices are being reduced. That is what our VLSI is, right? So, a size of our portable and the handheld devices, everything is shrinking day by day. And at the same time, we need a long battery backup. That is also increasing. We need small devices, but we need a power that has to be staying for a long time. But with these requirements, the leakage power in standby mode becomes a crucial factor. What is it, standby mode? When I'm not using my mobile phone, what is happening? My charge is leaking. How it is leaking? Because there is some leakage power. And that is what happening in your SRAM. Where your SRAMs are? SRAMs are usually present inside your mobile phones. So now, because of that only, I am learning about the leakage current is present that is happening in your SRAM because of mobile phone that we commonly use whenever I'm not using there is a leakage of power that leakage of power is a main concern for the researcher. So in most of our devices memory is an integral part right so we have a memory that is an integral part in all of the devices. Now I'm reducing the size of my device so what is happening the size of the memory is also being scaled down. Right, And at the same time, we want the power must not be dissipated. We want low power dissipation. At the same time, we want higher speed. The speed must be high and the power dissipation must be low. These two factors are usually contradictory to each other. That is how the VLSI is still a, a growing thing in market. Just because there is a clash between a power as well as a speed, so here in our mobile phones or handheld devices, we commonly use SRAM and thereby we are going to learn about the leakage current that is happening in your SRAM. Now see, I told that with the use of lower technology node, we are going to reduce the size of the device. So what is happening? In turn, the size of the memory cell is also reduced. So when the memory cell size is reducing, that is contributing to leakage current inside your memory cells. So when I'm reducing the size of the memory cell, automatically there is an increase in leakage current. So what are the components that is contributing to the leakage in SRAM cells? They are the junction leakage current. I can call that as a GIDL, which is gate induced drain leakage and gate leakage current through tunneling effect and the subthreshold leakage current. Out of all these three leakage current, the most dominant one is subthreshold. Is subthreshold leakage current? So here in subthreshold leakage is most dominant among all the leakages in your SRAM cells. So what is the subthreshold leakage current? It is the current that is flowing between your drain and the source when your MOS transistor is off. When your transistor is in off condition, there will be a leakage current because we know there is a channel that is formed between your uh, source and the drain. So there will be a subthreshold leakage current even if your transistor is made off. Because our already an inversion layer will be there between your source and drain. I'm not saturating my device. I just made my device to off. So still there is a channel present. Because of the channel present, there is still a flow of current. And that is contributing to the power dissipation. And that particular, and that particular current is nothing but subthreshold leakage current. 
So what is it? It is the gate voltage of the transistor is lower than its threshold voltage. So when such condition happen, your thresh subthreshold leakage current do flow. It is mainly composed of diffusion current. What is it? It is mainly composed of diffusion current. The threshold voltage of your device is accordingly scaled down to maintain the circuit performance at lower technologies. What is it? I said that I'm going to reduce the size of my device. So the size of the memory cells are also reduced. At the same time, when I'm reducing all these things, my threshold voltage is also reducing. But when my threshold voltage of MOSFET is reducing, it is contributing to the exponential increase in the subthreshold leakage current. What is it? If I reduce my VT, my leakage current is increasing. I want my device to be of lesser size. When I want my device to be of lesser size, I will be scaling down the memory. When I'm scaling down my memory, even the threshold voltage of my MOSFETs will be reduced. But when my threshold voltage is reduced, the leakage current is increasing exponentially. So there are two dominant subthreshold leakage paths in your SRAM. What are they is from the supply voltage VDD, there is a direct path towards ground. When there is a direct path, automatically whatever voltage I'm stored or charged will be discharged towards ground even in the standby mode. And at the same time, there is an another path from the bit lines to ground through the access transistors M5 and M6. Just look into the diagram, you will be understanding the black color lines, which are the subthreshold voltage from VDD to ground, there is a path at the same time from the bit lines towards ground through the access transistor. From the bit line towards the ground through the access transistor or from the VDD towards ground. Right. So in the cell, this is our six transistor SRAM model. So we are learning about the leakage current in SRAM. So in the cell as a whole, there are two gate tunnel leakage currents. Right. See, these are the two gate tunnel leakage current. When this will happen, when I'm giving, whenever my transistor is on, what is going to happen? This leakage current, when, whenever my device is off, okay. Whenever my device is off, there will be a still a gate uh, tunnel leakage current that is passing. See, 1.5 volt is being given to this PMOSFET. This is off, but still there is a gate tunneling effect through the thin oxide region. So this gate tunnel leakage current will be passing. And there are, so here there is one at the same time. Here there is again another gate tunnel leakage that is happening. And there are five gate induced drain leakage that is happening from all these sides. See here. Here, there is one leakage. Again, there are two leakages over here. There is one leakage and again, there is another leakage. These are nothing but the grain in gate induced drain leakages. So all these five leakage current together with the three subthreshold leakage current and the two gate tunnel, tunnel leakage current. So these are the leakage currents in your SRAM. In simple, the major component or the culprit towards the leakage is nothing but the subthreshold leakage. So it is not easy to reduce the channel leakage and GIDL. Okay. So when I say that it is not easy to reduce the channel leakage and GIDL, what is contributing to the GI? What is contributing to the leakage current? It is nothing but your subthreshold leakage. So the use of high threshold voltages produce a straightforward way to reduce the subthreshold leakage current. I am saying when my threshold voltage is reducing, my leakage current is increasing. What I can do so to avoid the leakage current, I can make the threshold voltage high. But when I use a high threshold voltage, what it will produce is my subthreshold current will be reducing, but the read circuitry that will be becoming more complex. So I can't do that also. So it is the other way for reducing the leakage current in your SRAM is we can use multiple threshold MOSFET devices. So in for all the MOSFET device, I can go for different threshold voltages. So this is a way through which I can reduce the leakage current in my SRAM because the most important or the dominant factor which is contributing to the leakage current is nothing but your subthreshold leakage. And what is the subthreshold leakage? It is the current that has been passing between your drain and the source even when my MOS transistor is off. 
right so to avoid that i can go for multiple threshold mosfet devices so this is all about your leakage current in sram so in next video we shall see about the read and write circuits of your sram thank you